Welcome back everybody. Today we're talking about Star Citizen Buying Guide for the Day 1 Invictus event that's currently going on on their website and also here in-game inside of Star Citizen. We're going to be going over the various ships that are now available that just came in, some old ships that now have some discount prices, and some ships that make rare appearances once or twice a year, if that, and even some early showcase before some of these larger ships come in, like this Polaris, which is this behemoth that's sitting in the showroom floor here that's just... Uh, dwarfing everything else that's inside of this uh, frame here. So we're going to be going over the price points, the discounts, uh, if the ships are good for PvE, PvP, what types of gameplay you can expect inside or uh, with these ships. And also, um, <laughs> I should mention that there is a free fly going on and that this game is currently in an alpha state. You'll probably see some hitching and some artifacts here as we're playing. But again, if you like sci-fi, and you like the, uh, or you're cool with the early access feel of all this, I'm telling you, this game is a ride. The scale, the stuff that they're pulling off now, the stuff they're going to do in the future, it's, it's insane. Like, you really have to step in here to see it. Anyway, so we'll be going over all of that stuff here for the day one. Uh, I want to make sure we move this along, and, um, yeah, I've done, like, 52 takes on this. All right, so, uh, there is a free fly event that's currently going, there we go, there's one freeze. Let's go over the website. So there is a free fly between uh, now and the 29th of May. I don't know if I said that already, but now's the best time to go in and see if your machine can even run this game because it's so demanding. And if it can, then you can decide whether or not you like it in its current state. And it's only going to get bigger and it's only going to get better. And I'm telling you, like we're on the cusp of some major, major improvements. Like we already have some insane stuff now, but the stuff that's coming over the next year is going to blow your mind. Okay, so if you do decide to step in and test it or even make a purchase, uh, all you need to do is make an account to start during this free fly. Use this referral code here, or uh, it's down in the pinned comment down below in my comment section, or it's in the description. But please use somebody's code if you don't use mine, because it's basically 5,000 credits on the table, so you might as well take it. You're going to need it. Okay, so that covers the free fly. The manufacturers, hopefully I get all this, the manufacturers that are being covered for this day one are RSI, Origin Jump Works, Consolidated Outlands, and Argo Astronautics. And let's see. Okay, so in the realm of starter packs and like how all of this works, I'll go into more detail here because I don't want to, some people know this, some people don't. But if you want to actually get the game, you have to get a starter pack. And there's various uh, ships that you can do in the starter pack. Essentially, you can get this entire game for 40 bucks right now. Like, yes, uh, you can earn all of these crazy ships you see in the pictures here all in-game. Like, you don't have to buy these with real money now. It's just to help support the game itself and its development. And to give you, like, a leg up, like, when you first start. But remember, um, you can, like, buy these things in-game, but you can also steal them from other people. Um, and it doesn't mean you're, like, going to lose your ship. There's insurance. But anyways, the point is... Uh, you can have 40 bucks to get into the game now, have a ship to fly, and you can get something all the way up to the Polaris once it's inside of the game. So it's like a huge ship. The one you just saw on the showroom floor. And so there's different flavors. So essentially you can get this whole game for $40 now or $56. Uh, this first MR, uh, what is this, the, the Aurora MR package includes 120-month insurance, which is 10 real years. The entire game, uh, now and when it fully releases, and some special, uh, what is it, skin right there, and then starting money, $20,000, and then if you use the referral code, you're looking at 25000 Boom! Not bad. Uh, the Avenger, I'm sorry, the Avenger Titan Invictus starter pack is normally 75 bucks. It is now 56, which is a steal. Same idea here, 10 years, uh, the 20,000 and the full game. So here's what's crazy, and we'll cover more of the upgrades later, but like you can start with the cheapest ship, and then you can upgrade it here with like cash if you want to. You're going to spend a little bit more. Or you can just earn them inside of the game. So remember that. This is just anything above these starter packs is to help support the game uh, above and beyond. But you don't need to do anything super crazy. Okay, so as far as comparing these two, obviously this is the more expensive one here, the Titan. But I think this has the most versatility if you're PvP or PvE. Now remember, it's a starter ship. So um, you're not going to be taking on capital. I mean, you could try to take on a capital ship or even a Corvette, but you're going to get stepped on. But this, this uh, I'm sorry, this Titan here really opens up the game for most things in the beginning or even mid-game. It'll help you kind of earn your credits so you can go buy the next big thing. So I think this is good for PvE and PvE for starters. So the Aurora is cute, but... Yes, you can do some, like, flying around and some freight and stuff, but, like, I feel like this little guy's kind of weak sauce. I don't know. That's just my opinion, right? Like, 
it's a cool ship. Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful on the inside. It's well done. But as far as like, if I had a choice, I'm going to take the Titan over the Aurora. Just saying. And both of these ships, as a side note, do fit inside of the larger hangar bays of other ships. Yes, the game gets that big. Okay, so let's move on because this is for everybody. We don't want to tune out the uh, the veterans here. Okay, let me see if we got this all covered. So we'll hit the RSI stuff first. Some of these prices will shock you, but just remember they're for larger groups and or uh, people that want to go above and beyond. So you don't have to spend this money to get these things. Uh, uh, let's see, let's see. I have it right here. All right, so here's the Ursa Rover. This is a variant that currently exists inside of the game, or the Ursa Rover does. This bad boy fits in a lot of different ships. The Andromeda Constellation, or the Constellation Andromeda. Um, the Mercury Star Runner, all kinds of stuff. But what this does is this turns this little rover into a spawn point. Now, without getting too much into it, this is actually going to change quite a bit as the game starts to get developed. But as it stands now, you can just basically pull this guy close to a location. If it's 30 meters radius, you can respawn back on your bed, which is great. And just know that over time, it's going to tighten up into something more... Uh, realistic and a different, uh, more deep type of gameplay. So you can't always just be like, I'm just going to respawn because I got my hoopty parked outside. Uh, but you can now. Uh, so basically, if you have a ship like a Cutlass Black, I think this will fit in a Cut Cutlass Black, um, you can pull this in and you have a mobile spawn point that you can use on the surface of a planet or, um, well, yeah, basically on the surface of a planet. But I guess you could do it in space too if this is parked in the back. And yes, this game is that big. There's whole worlds, and you can go up into space and space stations. It's nuts. So for its price point, which is, I think it's all the way down here, it's not too bad. And again, without getting too technical here, this does have, if I'm not mistaken, is it an LTI token? I think it does. Let's look. It does. Uh, let's see if this one here has the LTI token. So LTI stands for Lifetime Insurance. Okay, nice. All right, so here's all this work. So even, okay, so if you see this little badge here, those are for, what is it called? The, um, it's like a special club or whatever if you've been around for a while and you've spent some cheese. Just know that you won't always see this. So essentially you'll see stuff like this. So war bond is if you spend real dollars right now. If you've ground up other things inside of the shop, you can buy it for 60. Essentially if you spend real dollars, it's a little bit less. Th the reason why this is so hot right now is because this will be limited after whenever this is done, like on the 29th, this is a lifetime insurance token. And because of the way the upgrade system works in this game, like for your ships here, like inside of like the website, you can upgrade this ship to something else, like an entirely different ship, and still keep that LTI token, which is lifetime insurance, uh, which is rare. It's very rare. It's, yeah. So a lot of times, if you're looking to buy a bigger ship later, you will buy this Medvac first and then upgrade it from there. And then you pay the difference between, let's say this one's 55 and the other one's like 105. You'll pay an additional 50 for the upgrade. And so when you apply the upgrade, it gets slapped on top of the ship and it becomes that. Essentially, if I had a, an MR and I wanted to buy a cutter, there's a difference of, what, $15? So I own this, and it has an LTI on the left. And then let's say I wanted this. I would buy this upgrade for 15 real dollars, and then I would apply it. And then my ship inside of this package is now a cutter, if that makes sense. We'll go over it again. But this is kind of the way you can shift around or get LTI on ships that don't have LTI. It's basically a really nice way to... Um, uh, it just saves you money in the long run. A lot of my ships are LTI. It's hot. Um, okay, so let's go over to, do we have the rover? We have the rover. Okay, so its core price is 55. If you melt things down inside the store, it's 60. Uh, we do have some paint jobs here. Again, there's some ground play, uh, like gameplay loops, but really it's, this is for the respawn point. So, and also for the LTI token. So just keep that in mind. This one's selling like hotcakes for sure. Okay, on to the next one here. We now have, whoops, we have the full piece here. Is it go all the way down? Okay, there we go. All right, so some of these prices are going to be pretty crazy. Just remember, you don't have to buy these with real money. It's to support the game development. So we have the Apollo Medevac for $275. Uh, this one is going for 120 months insurance. Again, 10 years. Uh, it says, supporting other pilots in medical emergencies and, and evacuation operations. Superior armor and dual missile racks mean the Medevac stands strong against, or I'm sorry, strong under enemy attack. This distinct paint scheme pays homage to the beloved Astromedics film franchise. So this one isn't in game yet. I believe this will come out later this year. Uh, once that medical gameplay gets tightened up a bit, you'll start to see uh, these become a lot more valuable. And uh, again, unless you plan on this gameplay or this type of quote-unquote profession, 
you probably don't want to buy this. Uh, and with real money, you probably want to buy it in-game at some point. And especially if you're rolling with like a bigger org and stuff, this is going to be invaluable for sure. Okay, let's go on to its variant here, which is the uh, the triage. This one's a bit different for 250. Again, going for 120 months. Uh, supports other pilots in medical emergencies and evacuation operations. This one's crazy. Two semi-automated medi-lift drones provide safe and speedy patient transport. Again, all of this is going to be pretty hot as the gameplay starts to really get flushed out. Professional-grade modular uh, medical facilities deliver, deliver excuse me, support for all levels of trauma. And again, this is still being worked on. It's probably going to show up by the end of the year. Um, do we have more info on this bad boy here? I think we have most of it. Yeah, the industrial hangar, that's pretty standard. So 250 Again, if you're going to do this in-game, uh, sweet, you don't need to spend this money. But if you decide to kind of build out your fleet, if you're part of a bigger org, it's not bad. It's, it's going to be essential at some points, whether you buy this worth real money now to support the game or unless you buy it in-game. Anyways, uh, next one here is the Aurora LN. And I believe this is a, yeah, okay. Normally, this is always available, just the ship. Like you can always buy it in the store. It's always there year-round. But this is a special because you can get it for $40, and it has 120 months insurance, so 10 years. Uh, and again, this is like an early ship. Um, we covered a lot of this. This is supposedly the fighter, but again, a lot of times you're using your starter to make money to buy what you really want. So just keep that in mind. So like, this is definitely a beautiful ship for sure. I love it, but like, <laughs> once you have a better ship, you rarely go back to this one. Or you buy this ship if you've died and you have to go back somewhere else to like go get your stuff. So it's good for that, or it's good to upgrade. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, actually, we haven't been covering a lot of the PvE stuff, but um, this one's good mostly for PvE and a little bit of PvP. Uh, this is very, very PvP. And uh, same with this one. And then what do we have? The medevac? That's very PvP for sure. Um, a little bit of PvE, but... Anyways, uh, the Constellation Andromeda for $240. This is a good all-around ship for sure. It's not; It doesn't have the speed necessarily or the maneuverability, but it's a tanky boy. I mean, as it says up here, it's a gunboat. Uh, and you can do just about everything with this. So a lot of times you'll be taking your starter ships, making money to buy something like this. Because this is good if you're solo or if you have a crew of two or more or if you're doing freight runs. It's It's a solid ship. It always has been. It's good in atmosphere, it's good in space, it's got enough guns on there and enough customization that you can do with these guns and the turret ports. Uh, it's it's pretty heady. Like right here on the head is where the turrets come out on top. Uh, okay, so uh, this little guy is special because it does have a parasite ship on the bottom of it. In the back here is the P-52 Merlin Snub Fighter. Uh, it says here at the top, the transport freight and a wide variety of ground vehicles with the 96 SCU units of cargo space. And it says, take on any combat scenario with four weapon hardpoints, two manual turrets, and a daunting array of missiles. Yes, it has an absurd amount of missiles on this bad boy. Uh, again, this is always available in the store, but the kicker now is it's 120 months, so 10 years. A solid, solid ship. So if you, a lot of times if people are like, hey, I'm cool with pet spending the 40 bucks, I'm going to spend a little bit more. This is a solid platform to pick. Just know that if you're into like more high speed type stuff, this is not a fast ship. Uh, but it's definitely extremely versatile. You can stick a lot of ships on here. Or, I'm sorry, a lot of ground vehicles. Mining ground vehicles if you want to go into caves. Uh, and even the, the Medvac version of the Ursa, the one we just saw previously. Okay, on to some more variants. This is the Aquila. Am I saying that right? For $350, same idea with 120 months. This variation is, again, it has a rover, just a regular rover. The, the snub fighter in the back, which does not have quantum travel, by the way. And a redesigned bridge to provide maximum visibility for your crew and venturing uh, into the unknown. I believe this one has, is this one, um, I think this is for like exploration. So you've got better like quantum drives and some more fuel on it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. And I just, I just stroked out what I was going to say about this, uh, about this ship. This one's also pretty solid for sure. Like it's just such a versatile platform. Um, and I should also note with the previous one here, this is both good for PVP and PVE. Again, really good for hauling uh, more valuable cargo and protecting yourself because people are going to appear, whether they're NPCs or people, especially as the universe gets larger. Same with this one here. It just has a slightly different flavor. Uh, exploration and expedition. There we go, at the top. And uh, during the free fly, you can just run up here and hit rent for free and just try all of these ships. They're all available.
Okay, on to the Constellation Phoenix. This is a this is a kind of a special ship. This always has a limited uh, printing of hulls. So um, you actually can't buy this right now because they sold out and they sell out rapidly. Extremely rare ship. A more luxury version of the Constellation. It does have the Lynx Rover, which is a luxury version of the Ursa. Uh, and it has the P-72 Archimedes, which is a more uh, Jeff Bezos type uh, snub-nosed fighter. And it has uh, <laughs> enjoy opulent accommodations, including a full bar, dining area, and entertaining suite with a hot tub. Yes, there's a hot tub on the ship. And it also has some cargo in the bottom as well. Very fancy. Um, and it, it's good for PvE and PvP for sure. And it definitely has the wow factor. It's a cool ship. All right, on to the Taurus, which I... Is this... Yes, this one is uh, in the game. This is Transport Medium Freight for $200. A solid ship. If you want to kind of lean towards a good all-around ship with a little bit more cargo, this is the one for you for sure. 120 months on this bad boy. 168 units of cargo space uh, from the 96 from the other one. And... Um, Industrial grade tractor beam is very useful because cargo is just uh, getting more and more flushed out uh, for $200. And we're on to the Lynx Rover. Same idea as the Ursa Rover, just a bit more beefed out. 120 months on this bad boy. That's the difference. I don't think this one's around year round, uh, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Um, designed to fit perfectly inside of the Constellation Phoenix. Uh, compact frame. Well, they're all compact. Uh, so yeah, this is basically just the the Jeff Bezos uh, Lynx, or I'm sorry, the Ursa Rover. This one's hot. Uh, this is definitely part of the fleets. People use this on the regular. This Mantis is interdiction. You can stop people from uh, quantum jumping, or you can pull them out of quantum jumping. This is a mean, mean boy. It's tiny uh, at 150 bucks and 120 months, and I think this one's also available year-round. Uh, let's see. A dedicated quantum enforcer capable of snaring ships out of long-range travel. So there you go. On to, these are more still in concept, but they're coming. This is a big, big ship. I'm going to have to take a swig of water. This is going on, isn't it? $675. Again, you'll be able to buy these or steal these in game. So like, unless you're really about like supporting this, the 675 is very steep for sure. So like, don't think that you have to spend this to get this experience. Like a uh, good example is I have a large fleet. We'll, we'll just invite people to come in and play with us, you know, so don't even worry about it. Uh, but this is a beefy boy. Still not in the game yet. Uh, it says a legendary gunship reimagined from modern, four modern combats, four massive cannons, two remote turrets, a bevy of torpedoes. I mean, any threat can be engaged with confidence. Secure, I'm sorry, securely carry a small ground vehicle or up to 50 SC units. Um, and this is 120 months. Again, because this, for me personally, if I can't play it in game, I'm very choosy about if I if I support something of this price tag. I mean, it's almost 700 bones, 675. So, yeah, it's a thing. All right, so here is the big one we saw at the on the I was gonna say runway, but on the showroom floor, 750 dollars. This is massive. Um, and again, these big boy ships right here, the Polaris, the uh, the Perseus, and even the Mantis. This is more for like PvP with a group. Uh, even though this is a single seater, although you can get more people in there, uh, this is a multi crew ship. I don't see much PVE with this one, um, mostly for large groups and doing PvP. Same with the Polaris. Um, yeah, and it really like soloing these will be possible in the future, but it's not currently. Like you can hire NPCs to like do it, but you'll have to pay them and stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, let's see, let's see. I was going to show some of this info here. Do we have anything? 120 months. Um, this thing is wild. It essentially, uh, actually, yeah, let me let me read this. Uh, repair, rearm, and refuel a single fighter, a single fighter or utility ship via onboard facilities. This is the underbelly, but on top of this is an open hangar bay, so you can store something like a Scorpius or an attack fighter, and you can repair it and rearm it and launch it off the top of this. Essentially, this is a capital ship killer. Uh, torpedoes are so massive on this ship, uh, essentially it's going to pop or really... Uh, take a larger ship like an Idris and put it on the rails or on the ropes. So, uh, but I think it'll have a hard time managing smaller fighters. But again, a lot of this is still being flushed out. So if you want to go big and you've got a big org and you want to do this heavy, heavy, deep multi-crew type stuff, this is going to be the one. And be part of these big attacks that are going to be happening in the universe. This is going to be a hot one to jump on. Hey, uh, here's a little tip, guys. 
I already have this ship in the fleet, so if you just play with us, just jump on board. We can go buck nasty. Um, yeah, so... Again, I would not think about buying this unless you're serious about like playing and funding this game to like help it. Uh, don't think that you can't have this experience uh, if you don't pay the 750. Like I said, you can just play with us and you don't have to worry about it. Um, or steal it from somebody, right? Uh, okay, so on to the Scorpius. This is a hot, hot ship. If you like fast combat and it's a solid platform for a duo or a, a solo, this is the ship. It's basically the X-Wing, let's be real. Uh, it's available now uh, for 120 months insurance, so 10 years. Um, I know it's a beefy price tag for sure, but let's say you were to um, you bought your initial starting package, which was the uh, the Aurora, right? And you're like, okay, I like this game, it's cool. I just want this ship for my and I want the full game. You would go here to upgrade, and so since let's say you had this Aurora, that's 30 bucks. This is 240. You could still keep your game package and upgrade this, pay $210, the difference between these two. Uh, you would buy what's called an upgrade. It's an actual like line item. And then you would apply that to your MR vehicle, your Aurora MR, and then your in-game package would become um, Star Citizen, but it would be the Scorpius. So uh, that's what these kind of do. Hopefully that makes sense. This is the time to do these things because when these ships are available, you can buy these upgrades. When they're not available, so let's say the Scorpius goes away at the end of this, you won't be able to buy that upgrade till later. You can still apply it if you bought it, but um, it just kind of helps you move it around. This is the time to kind of, like I said, um, there's some LTI stuff, so you could buy it um, an upgrade and then, you know, basically have an LTI Scorpius if you wanted to. This is the time of year uh, when all of that happens. All right, so... Um, I mean, it's pretty much, right? It's the X-Wing. This is so good. Uh, it's got some some firepower for sure. This goes very well with the Polaris and other ships that can actually suit it. And the fact that this one rearms, these two are made for each other. And these wings actually get swept back uh, when they do, when it's in landing mode. Okay, on to the next one. I'm taking forever. Uh, the Scorpius Antares, which I th believe is relatively new. And again, these are flyable. This one's flyable and this one's flyable. Uh, this is for $230, 10-year insurance. Uh, prevent enemy ships from escaping via powerful EM generator and quantum jammer. So essentially, it's a uh, X-Wing version of the Mantis. Uh, you can pull people out of quantum and jam them. Um, it says, finish off incapacitated targets with four laser repeaters and a rack of missiles. That's what these are. Um, yes, very, very good support craft. Um, the Scorpius is a mean, mean dog, for sure. On to the next one here. Uh, that's the regular Ursa Rover for $50. Again, you can get this with the 10-year insurance. This is nice. There are ground missions to be done. A lot of times there's bunkers. Uh, if you land, let's say, your Andromeda or whatever, uh, you can roll this out the back and then drive up to it and then load it up with cargo and guns, weapons, whatever, and then take it back to your ship. It's a nice runaround for sure on the ground. And the uh, medevac we already covered. This one's, uh, I don't know too much about this one. This is the Zeus M MK2MR. $190. This looks like, again, 10... 10-year insurance. Um, this is a fully integrated interdiction suite with EM and quantum interdiction. Transport two detainees safely and securely via, I'm sorry, safely and securely via cryopod. A ship, a starship eight centuries in the making. Jeez, I can't read. Uh, surprise. Hi basically, it's bounty hunting for one or two people, and this is like a specific platform. Eh, there's bounty hunting now, but it's not fully fleshed out. So, yeah, you can you can do a few things with this, but I, I, I wouldn't make it your mainstay ship. Okay, so that's everything for RSI right now. I promise this will go faster. Let's go on to Origin Jump Works. Whew. All right, um, this is a hot ship. It's definitely very, very small in the starter range. The 100 series, more specifically the 100, uh, 125A, is the attack variant of this ship. $60, 10 years. Uh, it's got a bed on board, so you can respawn. You can sign out in the middle of space or on the ground. And it's got a little bit of cargo. And technically, you can have people stand behind you. But if you're pulling high Gs, they're going to be eating the floor. But if you had to take somebody out in an emergency, it definitely works. Um, this does fit in a lot of different ships, uh, especially the larger ones. Like, um, it would definitely fit in the Polaris. It would definitely fit in the Idris. Quite a few of these. Um, so it's really good for that. So if you have a big org and you want um, like a ship to start off with, this is a good, good ship. It's it's got some fighting chops. It's got maneuverability. It's good for PvP, PVE, um, and it would be a good ship like uh, to park in your crew's uh, bigger ships if you've uh, or just like a personal runaround ship. Um, and again, you can upgrade that in the same fashion. Again, if I had this Aurora, uh, this is a thirty dollar difference, so you can buy it that way. 
just want to show that because it wasn't obvious when I first started doing this. <clears throat> I was like, oh my goodness, I can upgrade these? Uh, here is the 300 series, the 325A. This is the fighting variant of the 300. And it is uh, tweaked or um, specced for interdiction. So this is a face melter for its class. It's definitely maneuverable and it's got some hits. Uh, if you get caught with a big shot on a big ship, obviously you're going to get wrecked. But uh, if you know what you're doing, this can be a, a mean dog for sure. 10-year uh, insurance, uh, benefit of upgrading fire, uh, upgraded firepower without sacrifice, sacrificing performance or luxury. Okay, so it's worth mentioning here, uh, the entire 300 series, um, some of them are made for exploration, some freight, some small freight, and for attacking and even racing. All of them, if you see this gear here, and it's kind of tucked away, I didn't see it at first either. This is the only ship series that is extremely customizable, like as you buy it off the showroom floor, you can do different paint jobs. Right? And it does increase uh, a little bit depending on what you're doing. So like it's $2 extra. Uh, wood interior. Right? So you can th get this thing specced out the way you want and then buy it. Um, pretty hot if, if you ask me. Like you can do, look at that, you change the bed a little bit, change the loadouts, you're good to go. And yes, you can do all these loadouts and purchase these things in game as well. Uh, but it's just really cool that this is the, like a customized version of um, like, you can really, really customize this bad boy. The entire 300 series is like that. That's the only one right now. So, not a bad ship. Honestly, if you're starting and you're in the, like, $100 or less range, not bad. Or if you want to upgrade your starter pack or your ship in the starter pack to this, not a bad ship. Um, definitely good for PvP and some PvE, for sure. Not super heavy on the cargo, but um, you can get by with some smaller stuff. Okay, let's go over to this. Not currently in the game. Um, this is a ground vehicle. Don't know too much about this one. I would imagine this is the Origin Jumpworks version of like a ballista turret. Um, something that's going to help um, shoot missiles up into the sky. Anti-aircraft, right? 10-year uh, insurance. Uh, charge into the unknown with this ultra-high performance exploration and assault ground vehicle. Missile racks, countermeasures, and fortified frame provide an extra protection when under fire. Again, once we have a lot of this gameplay flushed out, we have some. Uh, this would be a good thing to kind of throw on some of your larger ships. Uh, I believe this one would fit inside of the belly of the Andromeda, the Constellation. So again, going for 65 bucks. I don't think there's anything else super crazy with this one. Yeah, okay. A lot of these are uh, the 10-year insurance. And we're back to the beginning there. Okay, on to Consolidated Outlands. This is a cool ship, but I don't have a lot of use for it. I, I own it. Um, it's cool, but like there's been so much evolution here that I don't know if this is a good like just only ship, right? This may be cute to have for something else uh, as a backup or to run around somewhere else, but this is a fighter variant of the Mustang. Cool ship, but very PvP based. Not too much for missions, PvE. So if you like it, cool. Um, if you just want to do fighting missions, you can totally do that. So this one's 65 bucks, and then it's 10-year insurance. And uh, like I said, just a, a fighter variant of the Mustang. They are known to be fast, but they're also known to be very weak. So glass cannon comes to mind. More like paper mache cannon. Yeah, don't get it near an open flame. Uh, not a bad ship, but uh, let's put it this way. When I first got the game, I got the Mustang Delta. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. I like the name, but it didn't have a lot of utility. And it still kind of feels that way. Not to knock the people that designed this. It's a beautiful ship. Uh, it's fun to fly. Uh, maybe use it for racing. Uh, but I, out of all the other options we have, eh, I would probably steer you away from that. Okay, on to one of the more featured uh, ships that we have right now. This is the, uh, what is this called? The MPUV Tractor Beam. So this one's interesting. This does not have quantum travel capabilities. This is a parasite ship. Essentially, if you want to go somewhere far, this ship has to go inside of another ship and then go somewhere and then this one comes out. As the video is showing you here, this is a workhorse. This is used to load things. Uh, the NPCs can do it. You can do it to save money and time. Uh, but you'll see these things out at the cargo areas on space stations or um, if you're doing things like salvage. So uh, one of the things we've used tractor beams for in the past, and what I'm, what I'm going to use this for is, if you're doing salvage operations and you've got like an extra dude with you, have one guy like taking the scrap that's already manufactured and like load it onto another ship. Like it's perfect for that. Or if you blow up somewhere and all of your gear is everywhere, have this guy out there to help you kind of put all the pieces back together. It's really good for that. But just know that this is not a good standalone. 
Um, it does not have quantum travel, so you're not going anywhere fast. Uh, you can fly around the other ships, but it, essentially you have to take a big boy to, to take you anywhere. You have to tell mom where you want to go in the minivan. Um, but these have, what is this, three different variants. We have uh, the tractor beam variant here, which I think this one comes with LTI, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right? Bingo. So essentially, um, if you spend 35 real dollars, this is how you get an LTI token for cheap. So if you don't like this ship and you want LTI on anything else you've seen so far, buy this ship first and then move it to, uh, say you want to upgrade this ship to whatever you want and then apply that upgrade. So that's why we covered it earlier. I know it's probably super confusing for the beginners, but hey, it's a $35 LTI token that you can upgrade. So uh, I'm actually going to buy this for its tractor beam capabilities. It would be very useful for that. Um, this ship is also a standard of the cargo variants of this. Where is it, by the way? This is all the tractor beam variant. This one here is for cruise. This one's for cruise. Uh, essentially, the Idris has this on board to t uh, transport people across uh, between other ships or space stations, whatever. Um, but yeah, these are little utility vehicles, and they're very, very sweet. And I think for the 35 bucks, definitely worth it. And if you've got a little bit of extra cash and you're looking to maybe LTI something now or later, buy one or two of these and just sit on it. So that's uh, that's a pro tip from somebody who's been supporting this game for a hot second. Let's see. We also have, let's go down here. Oh, wait. We have the splash page. We need to go to the main piece. Main piece. Oh, here we go. Uh, the cargo variant is $35. Again, 10-year uh, insurance. Uh, it does what it says. It's for cargo. I think I just said that was for... You know, this is for cargo. Um, this one is for personnel. Essentially, you just dump a bunch of people in there. You're good. 10-year insurance, same idea. Again, none of these have quantum. All three of these. This is the tractor beam. This is the personnel. And this is the cargo variant. None of these have quantum travel. So they have to be inside of another ship. Now, this ship, on the other hand, does have quantum travel. This is a, a um, what would you call this? A tow truck in space, the SRV. This is currently in-game. Uh, by the way, so, so are these bad boys. Um, this is currently in-game for $165 if you want to support the game above and beyond. 10-year insurance, size 3 pilot control tractor beam, very useful. Uh, rugged design, heavy armor, and onboard habitation for one. So essentially, you can sign out in the universe anywhere and not lose your progress. And this is used to tow around vehicles. Good for helping people and charging them, but also for uh, pulling salvage wreckage to a safer location or somewhere secret. Used in conjunction with your other buddies, this is very, very useful. Um, yeah, so and then that's kind of what uh, Argo does, right? Useful type stuff. And I think that's all they have showcased for now. On to, all right, actually, I think that's the last piece of it. Yeah, it is. Okay, so that covers everything for the Invictus Day 1 Buyer's Guide. Uh, again, May 17th through 18th. Um, I think this goes on from today on to the end of this event, which is the 29th of May. Again, this is all a free fly. Be sure, be sure, be sure to use somebody's referral code. Use mine if you want to. It'll help you. It'll help me. Um, we don't get paid for anything, by the way. Uh, but it's just a great way to kind of get that extra cash. And hopefully we'll see you on our live stream and in the next video. Uh, love you.